Hi everyone, this is Jim. I played an interesting game at my local chess club last night and I thought I would uh, share it with you. One of the things that was interesting about it um, was that it was the same opening exactly as in my most recently uploaded Blitz video. So um, if you're watching in this later, I'm referring to my uh, Blitz game number 854. And uh, in both cases, White played the London system. And not only uh, that, but they played the exact same line. So you can uh, see some of my comments uh, on the opening in that uh, earlier video. And uh, I'll just get to the game uh, and uh, from where it diverges. Okay, so d4, knight f6. I have the black pieces. My opponent, by the way, has a rating of 1925 for this tournament. And my rating is 1808. This, uh, he's a strong player. I've played him uh, many times, and I think he has the advantage. Uh, I didn't check our uh, records, but uh, my impression is he's, he's a good player. He beats me most of the time. So anyway, uh, I played d5 here. He went e3, so we're getting into the London system. I go with my recommended move, c5. Go c3, go e6. It goes knight d2. And here's uh, where white is playing in kind of an interesting and maybe slightly offbeat way, uh, deferring the, the natural knight f3 move. And uh, the funny thing is, uh, in the blitz game, uh, white played exactly the same way. So we're still following that uh, blitz game number 854 exactly. And even here, um, knight to f3 is probably should be played at this point. I think uh, white has not made any mistakes, but bishop to d3 is a slight mistake. And this is exactly how the game uh, went, the uh, blitz game went. And um, in the blitz game, yes, I continued with bishop d6. And then um, white dropped back with bishop g3. So this is exactly the position we reached. Um, uh, white really doesn't want to trade off that bishop. Uh, he's spent a couple of moves getting it outside the pawn chain. And then if he trades at this point, he doesn't really have a whole lot. So it's kind of natural to drop it back. But uh, then I can play the move e5. So in the blitz game, I played something else. I think I just castled here. So this is where we diverge uh, from the blitz game. But I had just done that post-mortem, and I had noticed that this uh, e5 move was quite good. And um, it basically just equalizes for black immediately. So I had that uh, in, fresh in my mind. And so I went ahead and played e5 here. So this is where we diverge. If we back up a couple of steps, it's really... Um, on this move, on move six, that white needs to play knight to f3. If, uh, if you run this forward one more move, um, if white plays bishop to d3, then this bishop d6 move, you can see now, is kind of threatening e5. And, uh, and if white plays knight to f3 now to stop it, um, then black can take off that bishop and double the pawns over here. Now that's still uh, a playable position for white and maybe a little bit interesting because the knight gets a stronghold here supported by a pawn, um, but probably not, not the best that white can do. So, so it's probably better to uh, bring the uh, knight to f3 before playing that bishop d3 move. Anyway, this is how the game went. Bishop d3, my, my bishop out to d6, um, he retreated and I played e5. So now we're just on our own. We can stop with the opening book. He took, the uh, the move in the opening book was taking here, but that, they both lead to pretty much equal position. So, um, and it makes more sense to me to take the e-pawn. Um, the chess engine, I think, preferred that as well, although I think they're both okay. Um, and I took back. So it's not like uh, black is better here. It's just that um, it's been an equalizing move. So, so black really has no problems in the opening at this point, or from the opening. Um, I did want to mention, I could have taken with the bishop here. Um, probably if he plays knight f3, I would then uh, take the bishop on g3. And I wasn't really sure about that, if I really wanted to take the bishop on g3 and open up the h file. I'm sort of avoiding that. Uh, but the chess engine is not <laughs> so worried about that. So we'll see that come up later. Um, so anyway, I've got the knight here. I'm hitting his loose bishop, so he throws in this check. And then I just uh, drop my knight back. The knight's a little loose up there. He can put some pressure on it with knight f3. Um, so I just drop it back here and block the check that way. And that seems to be fine, too. So now he gets to develop. And, um, and I played queen e7. What I was worried about here was um, he could trade off this knight and follow up with knight to... Uh, e5 in this position, hitting the pawn over here. And it looks like a good 
active position for white. So I was just trying to prevent his knight from uh, getting to the e5 square. So I placed my queen here. I suppose I could have considered a queen to c7 as well, but I was, uh, wanted to have this look at the uh, e-file. And also I'm looking at his king indirectly, so I may have ideas later of pushing my uh, d-pawn forward. So I think that's a reasonable move, queen e7. And he played an interesting counter here. He went queen a4. So piling up over here. And uh, I spent a long time thinking at this point. I had, you know, I'd made the earlier moves pretty quickly. But here, this is a pretty interesting position. And I spent a lot of time thinking about it. What I was thinking about mostly is uh, whether I could just castle here. The thing is that after he takes and uh, grabs his pawn, that's kind of the threat. Um, you know, he's, he's also hitting my rook here at this point. I was thinking, can I play this move uh, bishop to d7? Uh, and the answer is I, I can't play it at all. I eventually figured out that doesn't work because he can just take this bishop. <laughs> His queen has to move. If it weren't for this square, uh, the queen actually has, uh, uh, I guess it's got a square over here. It doesn't have a lot of squares. Can't retreat on this diagonal. Um, it does have here. But I could start chasing the queen around with the rook. But... Uh, uh, anyway, so I couldn't couldn't find a way to make this work, and I ended up not castling. The chess engine says, oh, and I thought about this idea too. Maybe I should throw on the exchange. The chess engine says this is an okay position if I take here and then play rook to b8, saving my uh, rook. Yeah, I guess one thing I wasn't sure about, I thought about that uh, bishop takes g3 move, and I noticed my... Uh, my rook was hanging, and I wasn't sure if maybe he would take back the rook instead of taking my bishop. But, um, well, anyway, the chess engine gives this line for what it's worth and says that it's about even. So I guess um, I'm down a pawn here, but maybe I gain some tempos on the queen. I, I'm also hitting this uh, loose pawn on b2. So maybe, yeah, maybe I get my pawn back or I get enough compensation by harassing the queen. But, uh, well, as I said, I couldn't. Couldn't calculate all that out to a, a satisfactory position for me. So I ended up uh, not castling here. He just played queen a4. And so after long thought, I eventually just defended with bishop d7. And this is okay, but um, he gets to castle here. And now he gets this pressure along the, the d-file. And I went ahead and castled here. And at this point, the uh, chess engine is uh, once again recommending the exchange. So take here. This time there's no... no uh, big alternative. He should really just take back. Then I castle. And the queen can run over here to h4. Starting to pile up here. And I can play a move uh, like rip to e8. This uh, unpins my knight. You know, the, the queen was maybe a little bit loose there if uh, the bishop trades off this knight so the queen's undefended. So, uh, And it also gives the king a flight square if it needs it. Anyway, the chess engine says this is uh, an okay position for black. And it actually would play that way rather than castling immediately. Um, it's not so clear to me as a human player. You know, I just don't like to open up my H file and give give my opponent a free attack here. So I, I was not inclined to play that way. So I went ahead and castled here. Like I said, I'm just avoiding this bishop takes g3 move, um, especially now that he's castled queenside and he gets a rook here. Um, so I castled, and at this point uh, he plays in an uh, interesting and very forcing way. So he starts by taking the bishop here. Maybe this is why the chess engine liked, uh, <coughs> liked the idea of me trading, because my queen now has been dragged onto a file where his rook is. And then he can play the very interesting move, knight e4. And the, the chess engine also verifies this is the best move in the position. Um, before we get there, uh, I was thinking about the move knight c4, and I thought this wasn't as good. And the, the chess engine agrees. I was planning to just drop my queen back here if he plays there. Um, you know, I can't take it because of the pin, but I can drop back. And then the knight has to move, and um, maybe it could go to a5. That was a suggestion and a move I was thinking about when I was calculating. And this turns out to be uh, pretty even. Let's see, how's it go? Yeah, queen takes here, queen takes here to get the piece back. And then b6 to kick the queen away. And, um, you know, the material is even. Maybe the queen is a little bit oddly placed over here. The, the chess engine gives a slight edge to uh, black. One point here is, compared to the game, I now have a tempo 
after his queen moves, I have a tempo to get my queen out of the way uh, off of this uh, uh, D file where there's a pin, and that, that makes uh, my play a little bit easier. So, so knight c4 is not good. It, it leaves uh, black in a good position. But knight e4 is, uh, is very interesting. Uh, I guess I, I saw I could play knight e4, but I thought um, I would just take it, and it would be no big deal. But he can take back, <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, once again, exploiting the pin. So um, so if I take his queen, I didn't play this, but if I take his queen, he takes my queen, and if I keep taking, um, this is kind of the way I was thinking about it during the game, um, this is just not good. I can take here as Rick goes here. And now it's, it's uh, my turn, but I have two pawns that are under attack. It's my turn and I'm a pawn up, but I have two pawns that are under attack. And uh, I can't save both of them. Maybe I can't even save either of them. <laughs> and uh, plus, this uh, knight is going to be loose after he takes the uh, after he takes the g pawn here. It's just a a position where white is better, and his rook is active on the seventh rank. Yeah. So I don't. I definitely don't want to go for that. Um, the chess engine here, instead of uh, continuing to take, would play bishop to e8. And uh, after this exchange, bishop takes c6. Bishop takes. And knight e5, once again, uh, white is slightly better, although not as much better as in the other line. But in either case, it seems like uh, taking the queen is a bad idea. It leads to an advantage for uh, black. Um, and then there's the move I played. Um, I played knight to e7, uh, defending the pawn. And that's not good either, it turns out. But there is one good move that black has here. So if you want to uh, put on your thinking caps... Uh, this would be a good point for you to see if you can find the uh, best move for black in this position. Okay, uh, pause the video if you want time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away now. It's the move knight to d4. And actually, I was thinking about this move because it is a, um, it's an attack on this bishop. This bishop is loose over here. I had noticed that. Uh, so it's a kind of double attack. It's... Uh, because it's blocking the pin, so I'm also threatening at the same time to hit his queen. But actually, uh, in the game, when I was thinking about this move, I didn't notice this this effect. Uh, I, I noticed, you know, I was looking for tempo moves against the bishop. I figured he had to um, do something here about the bishop, and then I was looking for clever clever moves with the knight. Um, you know, so I was thinking about playing that maybe as a tempo move to to get the knight somewhere good, like there's a check here or I could take here. But uh, none of those seem to lead to much. In fact, they don't. But the key idea is that in this position, he doesn't have time to save the uh, bishop. He has to move the queen. Now, he moves the queen here. So this is kind of a forcing sequence. And my queen is loose. If he just moves the queen anywhere, you know, I can grab the bishop. So he's forced to move the queen here. Um, then I can trade and, uh, and take off his bishop. <laughs> that was the other thing. I, I was... Uh, I don't remember if it was in this line or not, but I remember noticing this idea. If there's a trade here, the knight comes in and attacks my bishop here. So I have to take this way, and then he can take back my uh, knight. I think the chess engine slightly prefers taking with the e-pawn. So we get this position, and, um, and black is just a little bit better. So I've come out of the opening and the middle game into an end game where I have a slight edge. Uh, not much. Um, it's a bishop versus a knight and two rooks at the same number of pawns in a symmetric structure. But I could play on uh, push for something. Um, so not a bad result from the opening, uh, except that I blundered here. <laughs> so I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, see all the, point, all the points of that knight d4 move. And uh, I just played a defensive move, knight to e7, planning to uh, later move my queen to unpin. The other thing I was looking for, were there any clever uh, queen moves I could make because I could, you know, I could sack the queen for a pawn here and then take his queen. But that just opens up the uh, H file, so that doesn't seem seem to be all that helpful to me. Um, so knight e7 defending, but now he gets uh, pressure on my, uh, on my d pawn. He's got two pieces attacking it, I have two pieces defending it, and uh, and he can bring more pressure to bear, and this pen is uh, is a little bit tricky to get out of. So he plays uh, some more forcing moves. This is all good play from white here. He takes, 
and then plays knight g5. And uh, it's, it's a little uncomfortable to defend against this. I guess he traded off the bishop so as to eliminate some of my defensive possibilities here. Um, I played f5 to block, you know, there was a mate threat here. <laughs> have to deal with that. And also I'm trying to get a move that uh, gives me the tempo I need to uh, unpin on the d-file. But unfortunately for me, he has this one move here that uh, keeps, keeps that winning edge. So, um, so f5 was, was really the, the engine recommendation as the best uh, response there. And this move, he played queen e6, is the only move that uh, white has that keeps that winning edge. But he's still winning at this point because this knight move comes with tempo, hits my rook, hits the, uh, hits the c pawn. So I come over here and defend. And now um, he drops back and he's hitting my um, hitting my uh, d pawn. And um, there's just no good way for me to hold on to the pawn. I played rook d8. And um, well, fortunately for me, he was not quite sure if he wanted to uh, play this out. He played knight uh, e6 here. I moved the rook back and offered a draw. And he accepted the draw. But... Uh, but after the game, he pointed out that uh, in this position, he could have played, uh, instead of coming back with knight e6, he could have played uh, rook to d2, just doubling on the d file. And um, there's no, no good way for me to deal with this. Um, you know, these, these pieces have to stay in contact with the pawn or I will lose it immediately. Uh, let's see, I can lift the rook here and try to double. He can bring his rook over and... Um, this going to this file also um, going to the sixth rank also covers you know his knight coming in and then I can double but now I can play c4 and I can't take it this rook is loose he's got two attackers and only one defender and I push forward um, this pawn will come under attack on um, on d4 as well so it, it seems I just can't hold on to the pawn um, there's one other interesting uh, tactical point here in the final position of the game Let's see, he went knight e6, I went rook to d to c8, and offered a draw, and he accepted it. Uh, but in this position, actually, um, c4 is a strong move, which uh, I didn't really think about. I don't know if he thought about it either. Um, so first of all, what happens if I take? <laughs> and this is the uh, point I was missing, because my, my idea generally was just... Uh, you know, unpin that pawn, and if he ever pushes one of these pawns forward, exchange it off, which is, you know, a good general plan, but you always have to deal with the uh, specifics, and the specific in this case is that it opens the d-file. So he sacks a pawn to open the file, gets it back immediately because he's uh, got a double attack here on my knight and my uh, b-pawn, and it's worse than that if I, you know, simply try and defend my knight here. It comes in here with the fork, and uh, this is a disaster. <laughs> and uh, if uh, if I move the knight, yeah, he plays rook d7. If I move the knight out of the way, then he can take on uh, on g7 with a check. And so he's got his pawn back, and he's attacking on the seventh rank. So that's pretty clearly winning for white. So anyway, after c4, um, I have to give up a pawn. I can't just take, and um, I can't defend it um, because his uh, knight here is guarding that square. So rook to c6 hitting the knight, maybe trying to gain a tempo he just takes. And we get this position. I can take the pawn, takes back, I take the knight, and uh, and then he takes on c5. So once again we get an end game where, uh, where white is a pawn up. So um, either way, let's go back to the final position of the game. There, there's also the line that, that he had calculated where just lifting the rook and doubling them was good enough to uh, win the center pawn. So if he had been in the mood, he could have uh, played on. We still had uh, plenty of time. So I was just uh, lucky this day that he uh, agreed to the draw. So anyway, interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you again soon. Bye.